So my car's going nowhere. So today we had big plans. Um, I'm supposed to be getting my microphone delivered, uh, a screen protector for my phone, and oh, the little uh, gorilla pod for my camera to stand on. But my car's being blocked in. My stepdad kindly blocked my car in, so I can't get it out. So I'm going on the train. Um, I'm, I need to get my hair cut. Number one priority. And I don't know if I can pick them things up until I get there. Because I have to wait until they send me a text. So if they don't send me a text within the next like four hours, I'll literally just be going, getting my hair cut, probably having a couple of beers and coming home. So I'm really, really hoping they don't let me down. This is what I've been waiting for guys, I've been in the bar waiting for this email Hello Dan, your, red, your order is ready for collection This is what I've ordered There's my microphone Sorry about the shakiness, it's cold um, My microphone's ready The only problem is, I've ordered three things and the other two things I haven't had an email about So it looks like I'm only going to get the, microf the microphone today but on the plus side, that's the one thing I really wanted. A little tip for other YouTubers, if you want to not have a shaky picture, put it on a selfie stick. If you hold your phone in your hand, it shakes really badly. If you put it on a selfie stick, it doesn't. Even though I'm still shaking as much as I was five minutes ago before I put it on this stick. Okay, we're at Argos. They've got the parcel, they've got the uh, microphone, but unfortunately the other two haven't turned up. Shame on you two companies, but this one did a very good job. So, bang on, let's get out of here. This is JB's hairdressers. That's Lewis, and he's just cut my hair. Get yourselves here. And it's cheap, bargain. One of the biggest questions I get on YouTube is, how are you so confident in front of a camera? And the truth is, I'm really, really not. And my New Year's resolution, apart from make the most of every single minute of the year, was to become more confident. It doesn't matter if there's people behind you. It doesn't matter if you're getting funny looks. It doesn't matter what they think about you. They'll never see you again. Who cares what they think? They'll probably give off a little smile. Some of them might look at you and think, oh, what a dick. Look at him on his selfie. It doesn't matter. The light isn't very good in this bar. But I need to do an opening, don't I? I need to open this. Now, I ordered three things which were supposed to be delivered today to uh, Argos. Only one of them has arrived, which I'm not happy about because the other two companies said they'd be there. They're not there. All right? But I'll open this one. And this is the one which was the main one. This is one I really wanted. And here it is. There you go, video mic me. And this is the microphone which is going to change my life. And yours if you watch all my videos. Um, and basically it's a microphone for this camera, not this camera. I'm actually, today I'm using my old camera which is a Samsung S4. Um, my, my new camera is this one, the Samsung S6 Edge Plus, okay? So I've got a cover for it, I've got a protector coming, but I need a windshield because wind is my number one hate in life. Here it is. So here's my Samsung S6, 
here's my new microphone and apparently it just plugs in and away you go perfect volume from now on on top of that when you're in windy situations which there's nothing but windy situations where I live the scent this this is a, like a, an extra you stick that on there bang on get in you can thank me later this is a new year's a new year's present to you guys perfect sound perfect picture now give me a kiss I think it's time we went and did something worthwhile. Okay, it's the next day and I'm hearing that uh, the other two parcels are ready. So we'll go get them and then I'll take you to the most famous medieval village in the world. I really will. Right, I've got my two parcels now. I'm a bit thirsty though, so let's just go grab a coffee with Mark the Butcher before we set off, yeah? So I've just been seeing Mark the Butcher. Had a nice coffee, a sausage roll, two sausage rolls and something else pie, pie Um Trying some samples for them, very nice. Um, th he's got an offer on at the moment by the way. Um, Mark's Butchers, Mark Carter, Carter's Butchers in Bridlington. If you spend £150 you get a free coffee. Tell him I sent you, okay. Right, uh, I'll just show you my new camera setup with my new parcels. So there you have it, there's my new microphone. Hope, I'm gonna take you out now to this medieval place um, so we can test this out against the wind because it's a very windy day. A bit wet, but very windy. So we'll give that a test out. We've got a little tripod now. I was hoping now them legs were gonna be longer, but it's okay, it's okay. Uh, and I've also got a, a screen protector to go on it as well. So that's my new setup for now, guys. Right, let's get to the most famous medieval village in the world. We are here. The place is called Warren Percy, as you can see from the sign behind me. And it's the most famous um, deserted medieval town, uh, village in the world. This is my camera without my new microphone on. I don't know if you can hear the wind. I'm presuming you can, there is wind there. Now I'm gonna put the microphone on. Just notice the difference here. And now you have the new microphone. Is there a difference? I'm sure there is, there must be. Right, we've got to go down this track. Um, it's gonna be extremely muddy because it was muddy down here when I first came uh, in December, about a month ago. And because it's just rained solidly all December and the floods just a few miles from here, um, it's going to be a nightmare. So I'll meet you at the bottom. What was Warren Percy? It was a, a medieval village, but people have been living here since Neolithic, Neolithic times. The Romans have been here, Anglo Saxons have been here, and then in the medieval times, that's when it became a little, a little village. And what you had here, uh, up in this direction, were two manor houses, and all along here and down this side, you would have peasant houses basically which was a, a little hut uh, with somewhere to grow the vegetables behind it. What you can see down here, this building here, this was built I think in the 1700s or 17th century um, because they used to, I don't know, I don't know what they did. I don't know what they did, I'm sorry. So here's a bit more information on it for you. So now we can say safely it was a 1700s and it was a farm with cottages and basically back in 19 something, 1950, the archaeologists came 
and they've been, there was there from 1950 to 1991, so 41 years, um, and they've only they've only searched 6% of the area. You can see here where they have searched. These are where the pits were. They found things in these, uh, which we'll go into more detail later. And there's some around the back as well, along with the big church, which is pretty cool. So get, let's go have a look around there. Behind me here, you can see where they've excav excavated. This is the outline of an old, an old house from, uh, the, I think, the 1400s, 1300s. And over this way is the church from, well, it's actually been around, I believe, since the 10th century, 9th, uh, 11th century. But this is how it looked. Um, at the end of the 17th or something. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm trying my best. Just bear with me. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I'm just not good enough. I'm not good enough. The archaeologists have excavated over 700 bodies from this churchyard. Now, I've always been a big hater of this. You know, there's talk about archaeologists saying that metal detectorists destroy history and things. I really have a problem with people digging up bones. Um, if that's where you're laid to rest, that's where you should be left. How dare a team of experts come along and say it's okay to dig up them 700 people and put them in museums. I don't agree with it, I think it's bang out of order. One of the skeletons though, um, you've got this here. An 11th century male skull showing the marks of delicate surgery after the victim was struck with a blunt instrument and he went on to live for quite a bit. So medically, they were pretty good, pretty good for, uh, for medieval times. You wouldn't expect that, would you? I can't imagine uh, it wouldn't be painful though because, the, I don't know, did, they won't have had anaesthetics and things back then, will they? Anyway, this is the church. Huge church door here and you open this whoa massive and you come inside now what can I tell you about the church the churchyard behind all these uh, slabs gravestone slabs they're all from the 18th century, 1700s bodies in there. There's none from before, but apparently some of the early ones were used in the building, you know, the stones to, to make the church, which is quite cool. Um, and this is where they found the skeleton, by the way. It was actually buried in the church, the one with the man with the hole in the head. It might have been someone quite important, I don't know. Um, Here's how the church has looked through the different years. Um, I can't be bothered reading it. I just can't be bothered reading that. You know, I like to learn things myself. I, I don't like to just read things which everyone else already knows. I like to learn things as I go along. Now, the church hasn't got a roof, as you can see. So, I, don't, I wouldn't have really wanted to come here on a rainy day, would you? Unless the roof has just come off. Yeah, the, the roof's come off. There was a roof on here. I'm sure there was. Right, I want to see this graveyard. I've been here before, but I just had a quick look round, you know. I was doing a bit of research, seeing if it was suitable for a video. I'm here now. This is the video. I'll just apologise at this stage that the camera's always on me. Um, it's not that I'm really that vain. Well, I am, I am. It's because I've got my flipper of my case on the other side and uh, I need to work it out. I'm going to have to cut that off, I think, the back because I can't put the picture the other way and talk from this. It's complicated, it's too complicated. Right, so we're in the churchyard now. Um, here you go. So these are all from the 1700s. Now, behind here was where they excavated, I believe, 700 bodies. I don't know where exactly, to be honest with you. But the reason they're not excavating this area is because people's relatives are still alive or something. But why should they excavate it anyway? Why? Why would you want to dig a body up? Just leave them be. 
nobody is uh, digging me up. Imagine, did I tell you, when I do get a gravestone, I'm going to have put on it, come on, get in. But that doesn't mean archaeologists, that means friends. Not that I want them to die. You can see the top of the church there. I'm quite high up and it's quite windy, so we'll see how this, uh, this wind thing turns out. Should be quite good, I'm hoping. Right, up here you've got some houses. Or should I say the foundations of some old houses. This was the entrance to this particular house. See here, so let's walk through here. And then if we turn right... That was where the chimney was, or the fire half, or whatever. There would have been a wall at either side, and this side would have been where everybody lived. The other side would have been where animals lived. And behind the house over here, I think, they would have a strip of land where they used to grow root vegetables and things like that. You see, I'm quite knowledgeable, really. I come across as a dummy, but honestly, it's all a show. I'm, I'm really, really quite intelligent. So on top of what I've shown you, there's also two manor houses over there somewhere. Um, I'm not going to bother showing you them. It's just bumps really. You know, if I think of anything really knowledgeable, whilst I just happen to be on my other phone, um, you'll see them little bits now. There were about 35 buildings in this village in total. That's a fact. The man who did most of the archaeology here was called Burrisford, and one of the skeletons they found had its head caved in, all smashed in. And he called this guy the tramp of the village. I um, don't know why, but they reckon, he reckons he was the last person in this village and he died because the roof caved in on his head. That's a fact. Out of the 700 skeletons um, which they dug out here, 120 of them were women. And they're saying that they were extremely big, strong women, unusually big and strong. So they obviously worked, you know, in the farming side of it as well, in the building side of it as well. But they reckon these were some of the hardest women in Britain. That's a fact. Eustachia Percy, she was a woman who lived here in the manor house in 1321. And she had a husband called Walter. A husband called Walter and he died of the Black Death in 1349. That's a fact. God, I know my stuff. Okay, people, I'm going to leave this video at that. We'll end it at that. Um, before you start, in the comments, um, please don't say, will you metal detect there? You're not allowed. If I could metal detect here, don't you think I would? The things they have found here, they haven't really found that much, to be honest. Not, nothing spectacular, you know? You know, they found a few bits which are in the local museum, which is shut today, otherwise I'd have taken you. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this trip. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in a few more days. Take care.